Are there good examples of behavioural change, methods of inducing behavioural change in ordinary people, not just scientists? I don't have good data on, on this. It's a very important question. I think there's far more people here at Berkeley who are expert in these sort of issues that, um, than me. Um, one example is the Google Power Meter, um, where what I've heard anecdotally is that people who use the Google Power Meter, which uses a clip-on device that talks to the internet through Google and shows you in your Google homepage graphs like my electricity consumption graph, um, anecdotally, people who then get engaged in that of all, to of all types uh, end up saving 20% on their electricity bills. So, so I think just having an engaging display that helps people compare one week with another is, is definitely a way of, of, of getting success. But maybe the best way to create behavioral change is going to be to use the media that are already used to make amazing behavioral changes. You see people wearing particular styles of clothing, baseball caps, Nike, and so forth, drinking particular drinks. Why? It's because of advertisers and role models such as uh, uh, sports heroes um, inspiring everyone to go for particular behaviors. So I think there's a lot more to tap into than just the geeky solutions that I've been mentioning. So I think thermostats are wrong. We shouldn't have thermostats where you set a temperature. Uh, one thing that's wrong with this thermostat is it doesn't have any way of switching it off. It's, this is my hotel room in Boston, and it right now is carefully pinning the temperature to whatever the thermostat is set at. There's no way I can tell it. I'm not actually there. So we've got to get away from thermostats and get people tinkering uh, with, uh, with their environment. And some Here's storage mechanisms. So I'd like to say a little bit about storage. Um, in Britain, electricity demand currently fluctuates every day. These are daily fluctuations. And gas demand for heating varies uh, annually. This is one year's variation with great big spikes when the temperature is low. These are temperature graphs up here, and this is gas consumption um, going up into the 70, uh, 76s of kilowatt hours per day per person um, nationally uh, compared with a summer consumption of 32 kilowatt hours per day per person. So we have fluctuations, and we need to, to cope with them in some way. And it, on the electricity side, storage systems are an option, pump storage systems like this one in North Wales. And heat storage, I think, is going to be a, a very important technology for this 2050 future that we're trying to visualize. If we can move heat, if we can have heat do time travel from summer to winter, that could really help out with the midweek, the, the midwinter peak demand. And in Canada, there's a solar community where 50 homes are using extremely outsized solar hot water panels on their garages here uh, to generate far too much hot water in the summer, and they pump the heat down into the ground um, and then pump it back out in the winter. So here's the hole in the ground, um, lots of holes 35 meters uh, deep um, in a place with a radius of 35 meters or so which has very much the same scale as the, uh, the ice houses that used to be um, common around this part of the world. Um, and it's got a similar function. This was for time travel of, of cold from winter to summer, of course. And there indeed used to be an international energy trade transferring cold on ships uh, around the world. Norway used to export ice uh, to London um, to the tune of 340,000 tons of ice per year. Okay, I've reached uh, half time, and I'd like to offer you a quiz just to uh, wake you up. I'm sure you've had a hard day, uh, as I have. So I've got three questions in the quiz. And the first question is, in 2010, I'll give you a bit of information. The UK had 273 wind farms. Here's a few of them. I showed you data points from them a moment ago. The total number of turbines in those wind farms was 2,747. Question one, was the output of all of those onshore wind farms bigger or smaller than the energy output of size well B, the average annual output of size well B. Have a chat to your neighbor, and then we'll have a vote uh, on whether you think the answer is A, B, or C. They're about the same. OK. Time to vote. Let's, everyone must vote, by the way. No, no uh, abstentions are allowed. So votes for A, uh, energy output. Uh, of the wind farms was bigger than size well B. Okay, grand, all right, that's about 50. Votes for B, energy output of uh, size well B was bigger. All right, that's about 500. And votes for C, they're about the same. Okay, that's about 200 odd. Okay, the C's have it. The correct answer is C. They're both 
producing on average about a gigawatt in power station units, or in my personal units, about 0.4 light bulbs per person on average. So multiply this wind farm here by 100 and put it alongside that one size will be, and they're about the same as each other. Good, so that's an interesting thing. Question two, here's a statement about energy reduction. In trials that DEC has had access to, we find that when you put cavity wall insulation, you get the fluff man to come and put fluff in your walls, you get a reduction in heat consumption of your home by about 10%. And incidentally, another way of getting a reduction is if you forcibly turn someone's thermostat down by one degree at all times compared with what they would have had it at, then you'll get a 10% reduction in their energy consumption for heating as well. Question two. Imagine that we get all homes to do that, to turn the thermostat down one degree, so reducing their heat consumption by 10%. How does the energy saved compare with one size well be of, of energy output? Have a chat. Okay. Time for a vote. Votes for A, it saves more than a size well B. Okay, that's 400 people, grand. Votes for B, less than a size well B. Okay, that's about 25. Votes for C, it's about the same. Okay, that's about 200 or so. And the correct answer is A, it actually saves quite a lot more than size well B, roughly three times as, as much. So in personal units, it's 1.4 kilowatt hours per day per person. Okay, interesting. Energy saving has potential. That amazing technology, the thermostat. You grasp it and rotate it to the left. <laughs> it does something. Technology is great. Okay, question three. I told you about the onshore wind farms and size well B. Now let's compare them with one other thing. Here's a blast furnace. The UK has got five blast furnaces. They make steel. The output of one blast furnace, like this one in the photo, which easily fits in a square kilometer, is 2.5 million tons of steel per year. Okay, that's very hard to comprehend because it's got millions in it. Well, one thing you could do with 2.5 million tons of steel is you could make 2.5 million new cars. That's the number of new cars that get onto the road in the UK in one year. Okay, so one blast furnace. Which is bigger, the energy output of the wind farms, which you already know about now, uh, the energy output of size well B as well, which is bigger, that or the energy consumption of the blast furnace, which is mainly in the form of coal. Okay, have a chat. Okay, let's have a vote. Votes for A, the wind farms are bigger. Okay, that's about 40. Votes for B, the blast furnace is bigger. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, go on. And votes for C, they're about the same. Uh, that's about 100 of you. And the correct answer is C. They're actually about the same. So yes, very big. Uh, there's only five of them, bear that in mind. Very big, definitely on the scale of things we need to, to pay attention to. So industry is a biggie. But it's about a gigawatt of power, or in light bulbs, 0.4 light bulbs per person is one blast furnace. OK, here's another thing for free, which is a gigawatt. The power going along one of these pylons um, which these protesters are complaining about um, is one gigawatt as well. So that's yet another thing. If you see one of these big monster pylons, that's, that's a nice eyeful of one gigawatt. It's the same as the size well B. It's the same as all the wind farms, on all the onshore wind farms in 2010. We've had some heat pump um, experiments where we measure how well the heat pumps actually work in Britain. And the results were actually not very good. Um, so these are some graphs showing results of not very good heat pumps. And so a member of my team, an engineer working for me, um, drafted, with the help of the industry, new standards for how to install heat pumps so that they will work well. And we just published those two weeks ago. So that's another project I've been really proud to, to be involved with. And hopefully heat pumps in Britain are going to start working significantly better.